Welcome guys, welcome to my channel. So for today's video, we will going to study or to learn how we can find its lead wires of our winding of our three-phase induction motor. So for this time, I will be speaking in English. So I hope for your consideration if I if you found me uh, speaking in English not fluently unlike the other uh, English speaking uh, country. So for the sake of my subscribers who is not a Filipino and who did not understand Tagalog as our national language so I will be trying to speak in English in this tutorial the last time I have performed video tutorial like this uh, I find it hard to remove all our lead wires in our three-phase induction motor and then one of my viewers requested me that uh, it should be pulled out all of our lead wires and then we will try to find each lead wires of our winding and then assign it accordingly to our terminal uh, terminal block so this is our uh, T1 this is our T2 T3 and this is our T4 T5 and T6 so what we are going to do now is to find uh, each pair of our lead wires of our winding and then we will assign it accordingly to our terminal box so let's start so the first thing we have to do is to use our multimeter and set it on ohmmeter as you can see it is already set on ohmmeter so the first step we have to do is to check all lead wires if this is uh, connected on ground or have grounded continuity so let's check it must be all in infinite uh, value so as you can see our uh, multi-tester have a reading of ol or which is infinite so let's check one by one let's check this one so no possible grounded let's check this one so no possible grounded so let's check this one again no the fifth wire no the six wire no so why we are doing first this procedure to check if this all lead wires have a uh, possible grounded because if we will not do this one and we will try first the procedure of finding each winding and connecting all this wire in our terminal block and then after doing all this process and we find out that there is grounded winding then all the procedures that we have done will be wasted we are going to remove it again and bring our motor for rewinding so this time we have found that we don't have any grounded uh, windings so we can now proceed on our next procedure so here we are now we are now about to find the first uh, winding of our three phase induction motor so this is a six leads motor so we have a uh, Three, three windings inside so what we are going to do now is to find the first winding so we will put our wire, uh, test proof here and then check uh, wire from uh, so this is the another endpoint of our uh, winding so we will put on our yellow wire so we don't get any value reading we will put on our blue wire so we don't get again any value reading so we will put on this red wire so we are now re having uh, a value reading of 1 ohm approximately 0 0.9 or 1 ohm so this means this is our first winding so what we are going to do is we will uh, assign this wire accordingly in our terminal block so the first pair should be in our T1 and in our T6 so this is the first uh, this is the general formula as what I have told on some of my previous videos so we will put now our uh, first uh, lead wires of our windings wind first winding in T1 and T6 so I will do it now and fix this wire on our T1 and our T6 so we are going now to put our T first lead wires in our T1 and T6 but before doing this kind of job 
be sure to protect our three-phase induction motor the open area be sure to put some clothes or some tissue so that this bolt in case we lose this one we, it will not go inside so this is our for our safety in case that this screw goes inside then we are about to disassemble our three-piece uh, motor and try to remove this one so for for safety put some clothes or some tissue or some paper uh, for protection of not going this screw in our three-piece induction motor so I'm going now to fix our lead wires from the first the lead wires of the first winding in T1 and T6 so the second procedure is we will find out our second winding so if you have noticed the first winding is uh, red color so for sure uh, this will be the same also with the second winding so this first winding you can uh, put also in t2 and t4 or t3 and t5 but since we are in tutorial so we will uh, make the proper procedure so we will put on t1 and t6 so let's now find the second winding so we put our test lead here and try on this one so we, we are not getting any value reading so try on this one also so we are now getting a value reading of 1.0 ohm same on our first winding so we are now going to put our second winding on our T2 terminal sorry and then T2 and the other lead wire should be in our T4 terminal so we will fix this one okay and then we are now about to put or to type the second winding and this one should be here so for the meantime we are going to type first all the all of the lead wires of our three phase induction motor so we are now having the first winding and the second winding of our three phase induction motor so for the third winding so we are sure that is that this is our third winding the remaining two blue color lead wires of our three phase induction motor but do not forget to check this one also for the reason that we should check also if this has a value reading of same with the first and the second winding so check this one if this is open or closed so even though we are sure that this is the third winding we have to check this also to be sure that this is balanced resistance with the first and the second winding or if this is shorted or open so we will now check with our voltmeter sorry so we are getting also the same value reading of 1.0 or 0.9 ohms uh, resistance so what we are going to do is we will put this in our t3 and uh, sorry and in our t5 terminal so sorry i have to put uh, i have to uh, type this first so i'm going now to put the bolt or the screw of our third wind third lead uh, third winding so the two lead wires of our third winding so it will be on our t3 again and on our t5 so we are done now so time for us to double check again so let's put our test leads on our t1 and t6 to check the first winding so what we get is 1.0 ohms and then on our t2 and t4 
so what we get also is 1.0 ohms and on our t3 and t5 so we are getting uh, 0.9 or uh, 1.0 ohms same uh, with a minimal difference so we are having a good uh, three windings of our three-phase induction motor so let's check again with the grounding if we have a ground possible grounded so we have infinite and then this one infinite reading also and this one infinite reading and uh, on our t4 on our t5 on our t6 so we are now having a good uh, windings and no possible for grounded so so guys i hope uh, you have learned uh, something from this video so how we can find uh, lead wires of our three-phase induction motor of each winding and how to assign accordingly now what we are going to do is we will try now to connect this in delta connection so in delta we have to have a connector from our t1 and t4 t2 and uh, t5 and t3 and t6 and then we will check what is the difference between the resistance of uh, of each winding when it is now connected in delta and then later we will check what is the difference when it is now connected on Y configuration so I will put also one video link description on how to find the resistance of our winding resistance of our three-phase induction motor and in delta configuration and in Y configuration without removing any or changing the connection of our three-phase induction motor so we can uh, know the value re uh, the resistance reading of delta and y configuration without removing or without changing the configuration of our three-phase induction motor guys if you can see now i i put already the connector from our uh, t1 and t4 t2 and t5 and t3 and t6 so the winding resistance of delta configuration is only 0.67% of our winding of our three-phase induction motor so on our winding resistance we are getting 1 ohm so let's check if let's check now our resistance now that we have connected it in delta configuration so it should be about uh, 0.67 ohms or something like this so we will try to put our test lead on our t1 and t2 so we are getting the resistance reading of 0.7 ohms so let's try to put on our t1 and t3 so let's check and let's see what read uh, what the value reading we can get so we are getting also reading of 0.7 ohms and then we'll, we will put on our t2 and t3 so to check if we have the balance resistance of our three phase winding so we are getting also 0.7 ohms so to be sure again but uh but we have done already that we don't uh we don't have any ground possible ground so we will try to check it again for our safety so often infinite infinite for the second uh, for our t2 and then infinite also in our t3 so we will now try to find uh, to make a, uh, to connect this in y configuration so according to uh, formula that the y configuration uh, winding resistance is two times higher than the winding resistance of our three-phase induction motor and three times higher in the value re reading of our or, or or in the resistance of our delta configuration so this time we are getting 0.7 ohms on delta configuration one ohm on wi open winding or or in the winding that is not configured we are getting one ohm so we, we we should get two ohms when we are about to connect this in y configuration so uh, just wait and i will do it on y configuration 
so this is it guys i have already made our uh, three-phase induction motor in y configuration i have already put our connector or from our t4 t5 and t6 i already made our what we called the start point in y configuration so what we are going to do is to check the resistance reading of y configuration so according to our formula delta configuration is three times smaller than y configuration so it means 0.7 we should get about 2.1 or 2 ohms resistance in y configuration and before when we check the winding resistance of our three-phase induction motor we are getting 1 ohm so according to our formula uh, y configuration is two times higher than the resistance of open winding configuration because it is now connected in series connection so we will try now so we will put our t uh, sorry we will put our uh, test from here in our t1 and t2 so let's wait we are good getting two ohms so we will put on our t2 at uh, t1 and t3 So we are getting also 2 ohms. So we will put on our T2 and T3. So we are getting 2 ohms. So how about if we are going to put our test lead here and our T1 and on the start point. So which value we should get? I think we ah we should get 1 ohm because we are only uh, getting the first winding. So let's try. see we are getting one ohm so this is our uh, the end point of our first lead wires and the end point of our second uh, first winding so we will try with t2 and with and and with the start point we should get same one ohm reading one ohm resistance reading so same so we are, we are getting balance resistance and then we will put on our t3 and on our start point so we are getting same value reading about one ohm resistance so guys i hope you have learned a lot from this video and sorry for my uh, english pronunciation and for my grammar but for sure i have done and i have tried my best uh, to speak in english and to teach you and for you to learn something so if you have any comments or suggestion Please comment down below. See you guys on the next video. God bless you all.